Hi, everyone, and welcome to another issue of the People's Health Dispatch. Uh, today, we are here to discuss something that happened at the beginning of March, uh, when uh, an alleged text of a compromise of the TRIPS waiver was leaked to the media. And this text was presented as the result of the consultation among a small group of members of the WTO, of the World Trade Organization, uh, namely those were the EU, the US, India and South Africa. Uh, but uh, although the, uh, the document was leaked to the media, it remains unclear uh, how many of these four actually agree with the document and whether it's only the EU that stand, stands behind this version of uh, the, the waiver. Uh, and notably, both India and South Africa have remained quite silent on, uh, on it. So um, this is important because we know that India and South Africa have been among the main drivers of a TRIPS waiver at the WTO from October 2020. Uh, and so uh, also important to note that since this compromise document was leaked, uh, so both social justice and rights to health movements uh, have uh, raised their voice raise their voice against it. Uh, they have criticized it heavily because uh, they say that it's not nearly enough to ensure the equitable access to COVID-19 products that we need uh, and that we especially need to see in the global south in order to mitigate somehow uh, the negative effects that the pandemic is having there. Uh, instead, the people's movements are insisting on a return to the original TRIPS waiver uh, proposal, which was tabled by India and South Africa uh, a year and a half ago, and which today is supported overwhelmingly by most WTO uh, member states uh, at the organization. And so uh, for this issue, we are joined here by Gopak Kumar from the Third World Network, uh, and we're going to discuss in what context this leaked document appeared and what are the chances that it goes through and of course what we can expect if it does. So Gopa, thank you so much for joining us today and welcome to the People's Health Dispatch. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about the political context in which this leaked document appeared? So what do we know about the group that worked on it? Uh, what do we know on, of the pressures that shaped the document to look like this and so on? As you told, Anna, uh, it was uh, uh, an unprecedented mobilization around this proposal uh, to have a temporary uh, suspension of uh, TRIPS obligation to facilitate uh, availability and accessibility of uh, various COVID-19 uh, uh, health products, which is required to effectively respond to the pandemic. However, there was no much forward movement on this issue. Um, nearly one and a half years of uh, uh, deliberations or discussions happened within the TRIPS Council. However, it became very clear that towards uh, November, without a solution to this issue or without addressing the TRIPS waiver request, there would not be much headway on other issues which are currently under negotiations in WTO. And it has also become a moral issue on a, uh, uh, at the time of a pandemic, which is happening once in 100 years, the WTO as an organization has to uh, respond to this pandemic uh, to um, uh, effectively uh, enable countries to respond to the pandemic. However, there are a few countries uh, which has uh, uh, heavy commercial interest in the pharmaceutical sector are blocking uh, the progress uh, towards the, uh, uh, you know, arriving at a consensus. So EU is in the forefront of the, uh, among those uh, group which are vehemently opposed to the waiver proposal. So in December, when uh, Omicron uh, appeared and then the WTO ministry had to be postponed. Then the WTO secretariat uh, took an initiative to bring India, uh, South Africa, uh, EU and the US uh, together uh, to find a solution uh, to the trips waiver request. I think uh, though uh, what I heard 
uh, is that uh, though there was some uh, informal consultations or informal sittings were going on, but uh, from December onwards, it became very intense and hectic. Uh, I think these meetings happened uh, in a very, uh, 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 very confidential way. Uh, there were many rounds of meetings uh, among these four countries. And um, now we know that these uh, these discussions or these negotiations uh, led to uh, some compromise, but we do not know that compromise is agreed by all uh, uh, all those parties who engaged uh, in that uh, process. But we definitely know that you has uh, uh, circulated in. Uh, document uh, among uh, its member states which contains a decision that this uh, draft decision text and that draft decision text is uh, leaked now it's in the public domain but at the same time the USTR issued a statement that of course uh, there was a process and that process led to a compromise but that statement clearly said that there is no agreement reached uh, on the content of the text thanks so much uh, thanks so much for the for the good contextualization. And now I just wanted to uh, ask a bit more about something that you mentioned. Uh, so basically, you said that you know uh, this league document really reflects the EU position that we have seen uh, in the past months, uh, and it has also been criticized uh, by the access to medicine movements, by broader social justice movements. Uh, who, and all these movements have said that it's not actually a waiver. So uh, if this document is uh, is accepted by the, the WTO, uh, can you expl explain a bit what's going to happen? So what part of intellectual property rights might be lifted, uh, which might not, and why is this important? It is to, um, uh, important to understand the uh, rational behind the uh, waiver proposal. The waiver proposal emanating from a shared understanding that the existing flexibilities in the TRIPS agreement uh, are not enough to address the COVID-19 like situation, uh, primarily because of uh, you need a range of products. That way, at a global level, there is a huge demand for that product. So there is a shortage of supply of all these products. So you need to scale up. It is not only the availability alone, you should be, it should be available at an affordable price then only you can effectively respond to the pandemic. From that understanding, it shows that IP is the main important barrier and many of these medical products are protected with multiple uh, forms of IP. Say for example, vaccine. Vaccine, of course, uh, everybody knows that it is protected with the patents, but many people are not aware that uh, it is also equally protected with the trade secret protection. So therefore, the existing flexibilities, when we articulate in the context of public health, um, the IP flexibilities, uh, what comes to uh, in our mind is the patent, not uh, 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 like trade secret or industrial design, etc. So it is important. Uh, we need to um, overcome any type of IP barriers which is on the way uh, for the scale up of production. So from that understanding, uh, the TRIPS waiver proposal uh, uh, was submitted. <clears throat> and it's also important that the, even the existing flexibilities like the compulsory licensing is not enough to address primarily because there were political pressures against the use of compulsory licenses. And many times the compulsory license can be issued only when there is a patent is in place. But many times uh, what we have seen is in, you know, new products are, con are concerned, then the, there is no patent per se, but there is a pending patent application. So uh, many times countries are not in a position to uh, use the compulsory licenses. The idea of a uh, waiver uh, is basically to, uh, to suspend the intellectual property for a short period of time related to COVID uh, health products. So uh, there is, would be a freedom of operation without administrative or legal uh, procedure requirements. Uh, the concerned companies or firms or when individual can uh, produce these products or when government can produce these products. So this is the idea of uh, idea of uh, uh, behind waiver. 
but what we are offered now and uh, as per the leak text is a compulsory licensing mechanism which is uh, um, uh, which is uh, uh, come up with uh, uh, a lot of conditions and some of these conditions are uh, uh, trips plus trips plus in the sense that that goes beyond the current obligations of countries under the trips agreement uh, the uh, leak text proposes or make it mandatory for countries to list all the patents, uh, you know, uh, while issuing compulsory license. So many developing countries, it is almost impossible to find out. And it may take, it may, these may, conditions uh, may delay the entire process. There is another uh, um, TRIPS plus mechanism uh, or TRIPS plus uh, conditionalities attached in the leak text is that countries are prevented from re-export. Uh, re under Article 6 of the TRIPS Agreement, every country has the freedom to determine uh, whether they allow parallel importation or not. Parallel importation means if a patent product comes at it, uh, you know, from one country to send it to another country, a place where the price is uh, you know, selling at a higher price. So you can always say, send your cheaper product to another place without the permission of the patent holder, provided that destination or the export uh, destination should not have, there should not have been a patent. That's all. But now there is a condition preventing re-exportation. There is nothing in the TRIPS agreement prevents re-exportation. So this is a very very uh, problematic situation. What we uh, what we uh, wish to achieve is the much more flexibility. What we are offered now is the flex uh, is the limited flexibility is with more onerous conditions. So that is unacceptable. Yes, uh, and I think that one of the uh, of the issues that uh, has been raised also publicly uh, for the past weeks uh, is that uh, the current document, the one that was published by the EU, uh, is very vaccine oriented, and that is definitely going to be uh, like an issue for uh, places in the global south, uh, which have been left behind by the west, by the global north. Uh, during vaccine procurement. So people have not been uh, vaccinated uh, in the global south. Uh, their access to the vaccines remains extremely limited. Uh, and increasingly, uh, of course, they will need the treatments that are made available now. They will need the diagnostics that, uh, um, that are available. Uh, but this document doesn't seem to take that into consideration. So it's uh, a vaccine thing. Uh, with some space for expanding it to uh, to treatment and to diagnostics uh, at a later uh, at a later point, but of course we cannot know if that's going to be if that's going to be considered after all or not. So uh, actually, my uh, next question uh, was to, going to be about this uh, a bit more. So could uh, could you maybe re reflect on how uh, this? EU document would reflect on low and middle income countries? I think it's uh, important to uh, note the limitation of the uh, COVID-19 vaccines currently available in market. All these vaccines has a limitation which does not prevent the infection. It only reduces the severeness of the disease. That means that the vaccinated people uh, all uh, are uh, not free from the infection. So that basically underlines the importance of the availability and accessibility for the therapeutics and diagnostics. Now, people, uh, even after vaccination, and there are uh, 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 geographical locations or countries, especially low and middle income countries, which are uh, uh, lacking behind the uh, vaccination drive, uh, primarily due to the lack of availability of vaccines, there the risk of uh, infection, uh, severe infections are more, so you need treatment. And uh, there are therapeutics are coming into the market, including the Pfizer's product, which is very promising, which can reduce the burden on health system. You can be treated at home, uh, unlike the remdesivir, which you require a hospitalization. So this, uh, therefore, the access to Therapeutics is very critical in the context of <clears throat> uh, developing countries and therapeutics, which uh, uh, which can be produced. These medicines are uh, small molecules which can be produced by many more 
developing countries, uh, or, uh, I mean, low and middle income countries too, um, compared to the vaccine. Vaccine manufacturing capacities are concentrated in a very few countries, uh, but uh, the ability to produce <coughs> therapeutics, uh, uh, there are uh, uh, many more countries. Therefore, um, to access uh, uh, the freedom of operation to produce uh, therapeutics and diagnostics are very important and it's also critical from a public health perspective to address um, the uh, COVID-19 um, uh, uh, challenges, right? Uh, but this leaked text shows that it is limited to uh, only vaccine. But the last paragraph of the text shows that the same decision will be applicable uh, in the case of therapeutics and um, diagnostics, um, but uh, the member state has to take a decision within the next six months. So that uh, basically means there may not be any decision uh, to waive uh, or whatever the, the, not a waiver, but this solution applicable to uh, therapeutics and diagnostics. But there is another underlying implication is that uh, the same text will be applicable in, uh, for therapeutics and uh, diagnostics. Uh, that would be disastrous because for one of the uh, criteria uh, to become an eligible country is 10% of the you know, export criteria, which is mentioned in the footnote. So that means many countries who has the capability to produce um, generics and export to least developed countries or even uh, many other law and mental income countries will be excluded from uh, uh, using the benefit of uh, this uh, this decision. And of course, uh, what I'm saying that using the benefit means I don't think there are any benefit, which I explained to you the reason for that. Um, but even for the argument's sake, if we accept that there is some uh, benefit, um, even those countries who are benefiting that uh, in a limited way from this may be excluded. Uh, from using this uh, option, for, for instance, India. Uh, India is now uh, uh, become a, an eligible country in the case of, as per the leaked text, but if the same criteria is applicable, then they may not be. And it's also important that uh, currently the least developed countries are not mentioned. So the any least developed countries who are complained to the uh, TRIPS uh, IP regime, uh, which was a TRIPS complaint uh, intellectual property law, then those countries may not be in a position to make use of the, uh, or uh, to benefit out of uh, uh, this particular decision. So that can seriously hamper the availability and accessibility of therapeutics and diagnostics in the developing world. Yes, so basically also uh, it's, uh... It's been referred to as a very anti-poor document, so something that's uh, you know that's really not taking into consideration any of the actual needs uh, of uh, of low and middle income countries. Um, but on the other hand, uh, and this is maybe to give us a bit of perspective of what uh, what we can expect in the weeks and months to come, uh, this leaked document is actually, as you already said, it's not. A formal document. It has not been accepted at the WTO. Can you tell us a bit more about what we should expect to see from uh, from the right to health movements in the in the near future? Uh, what's still there to be done to stop this kind of uh, of document of passing through? Uh, and whether you consider that it has actually any real chance of actually being endorsed by the WTO? As I told you earlier, like uh, the United States uh, Trade Representative Office and uh, and WTO Secretariat issued statement that there are uh, uh, differences uh, among member states. I mean, reading between the lines, it's very clear. But both statements shows that uh, there is no agreement on the text, uh, and uh, we have uh, we have not heard from um, India and South Africa yet. And at the same time, um, we are aware that uh, there are many appeals 
coming from various part of the world requesting government of india and uh, the south african government not to endorse this text so i think the eu will uh, uh, along with the uh, wto secretariat will exert pressure on india and south africa uh, to be part of this uh, 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 text and present it as a, a joint text uh, by india south africa uh, us and eu uh, and try to attempt uh, to divide and rule uh, basically uh, 65 countries developing countries which includes india and um, south africa um, are co-sponsoring this uh, uh, this waiver proposal now the attempt of the eu is to uh, force uh, india and south africa to be part of this text and that's leaving the uh, co-sponsorship and leaving that uh, 65 member coalition and to reduce it into a 63 member uh, coalition. So this would be the attempt they may make. I think therefore it is important for uh, health groups and social movements to uh, to expose this uh, the EU strategy and use uh, commercial interests over people's health and to appeal uh, to all uh, governments to uh, especially the uh, southern governments do not accept this text that includes india and south african government so it is important uh, that uh, the developing country unity is maintained uh, at the wto uh, on this issue and to reject eu's text and you know, and also tell secretariat not to uh, when you as a uh, facilitator of a process to broker a deal or to uh, to, to um, end an impasse, then uh, the Secretariat as an international organization should play a neutral role. It should not play a role to support a particular country. And um, uh, and to be, you know, uh, what we always say, justice should not be done, but it should be seen. You know, people should see that justice is done. So in this case, uh, WTO, um, uh, WTO should uh, uh, Secretary, uh, you know, while engaging, should maintain a level of transparency and should not uh, side with any uh, dominant member countries, and uh, and should not accept pressure on developing countries to accept this text. Also, because the statement of the WTO DG also shows that oh, this is a very very hard bargain and the compromise is reached and and this is the text and try to whitewash the. Mm. Uh, whitewash the uh, and very in uh, equitable uh, agreement which you know uh, all of us the international students know, know that you know many times the uh, the powerful actors push us an inequitable agreement and then once it is signed and when trips agreement it's a, is a classic example where it's uh, pushed on developing countries and once it is signed then it became a legal text and then there is the whole uh, moral obligation to obey the international regime which is highly uh, inequitable i think the, the the responsibility of the social movements and uh, civil society organizations including uh, people uh, health movement at this moment is to convey and expose this uh, inequity in, in uh, reflected in the current uh, leak text and appeal to our governments not to be part of this uh, uh, this deal. Thank you, Gopal. Uh, and of course, we know that in the next few months, uh, we'll still be following what's going on with the TRIPS waiver, uh, with the WTO meeting this summer in Geneva, apparently, and also with some uh, high strain times for the European Union these days. So it's uh, definitely going to be interesting to see what happens. So uh, thanks, Gopal, for joining us at, uh, here. Uh, we hope to host you again at some point uh, with better news, maybe. Uh, thanks also to everyone who tuned in for this issue of the People's Health Dispatch. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Uh, and of course, you can always subscribe to the newsletter, to the Telegram channel, if you want to receive the bulletin directly to your inbox. <laughs>